My name is Eli, and I'm a community manager at TechSoup, and I'm going to be your host here today. This TechSoup webinar is presented in partnership with our friends at the Communities Foundation of Texas. But who do we have here in the hot seat as our star for the day? We've got one of my very favorite people, Aretha Simons. Aretha is the founder of Multiplying Talents International, and she is more interesting than me. Aretha is a retired Navy veteran with extensive experience in nonprofit setup, grant writing, and coaching. She has served during Operation Desert Storm and Operation Iraqi Freedom, and is committed to coaching and guiding individuals with a passion for community service. This passion led her to establish her nonprofit, and she was honored with an all-expense-paid trip by, got this, Oprah Winfrey to address the U.S. Senate on nonprofit funding. Aretha has conducted workshops and seminars across the nation for colleges, churches, and nonprofits, including organizations you may have heard of, like the Disney Entrepreneur Center and the Department of Labor. So yes, she's accomplished. She's wise. We are in great hands. With that, let's pass the baton over to you, Aretha. Wow. Thank you, everyone who put in the chat. Thank you for your service. Um, whenever I see that, I never take it for granted because there are some people who did not make it back. So thank you so much. Hey, um, I want to get into it and just be real. Can I be real with you guys? Because we know that fundraising is real. If we can be transparent, um, the struggle is real. On fundraising, where people say, oh, let's put the fun and fundraising. Sometimes it's not fun. Um, sometimes we feel like we're begging, but we're not really begging. Um, we're asking people to help us make a difference in other people's lives. So I say hats off to all of you in the nonprofit community. But when we're doing this, oftentimes when you're a small nonprofit, there are limited resources. And when I say limited resources, how many of you are the only one, the only employee? And some people say we're the only full-time volunteer employee. And I bet that's quite a few. If I could, yeah, it's coming in. There's a lot of people. There are a lot of people. So small nonprofits, they do have a few financial and human resources, if I could say that as well. So it makes them it challenging to hire somebody and find a dedicated fundraising staff or even having a full-time volunteer be that fundraising coordinator. So I get that. We're going to talk about that in just a moment, how we can help smooth that out. And also for nonprofits or small nonprofits, it is difficult demonstrating the impact. I was talking to Alexander um, earlier, and we were talking about the size of nonprofits who can apply for grants. And we talked about, he said, you have to be two years old. But I say, some people say, oh, we've been around for longer than two years, but we just started. And so we don't consider ourselves that old. So it's just difficult demonstrating sometimes your impact, but that's one thing you definitely have to do. And I'm going to really dig into how you can make an impact later um, in this webinar, because a lot, a lot of people miss this small thing that can really make a difference to whether you can get a grant or whether you're denied a grant, because you could not demonstrate the impact that you made in the community. Now, several ways. I know you probably already doing this. You're writing down your stories. You get testimonies, um, whether they're written or via video, but you have to do that and start gathering that information, how you've made an impact in people's lives. Because your donors, a lot of times like to see tangible results, right? Because when they see that, they can make a contribution. And then the other thing, which we can go into many struggles, you guys can put some struggles in the chat that you have in fundraising. But one of the ones I want to talk about, your uh, limited capacity in demonstrating, and I could put that, all kinds of things, demonstrating the expertise in front of fundraising, because some people say, hey, I just do this out of passion. A lot of us, we started doing this out of passion. We didn't think of this as, hey, I've got to operate this like a business. I've got to do this. I've got to do that. I got to do my 990. All the things that you didn't know you had to do. And we just didn't focus on the fundraising part. But we know that we have to adopt some fundraising, right? Some fundraising methods, some technology, some technologies or technologies for fundraising, like having your CRM, your customer resource management software. There's all kinds of things. And so those are some of the ways or some of the areas that nonprofits lack the capacity. So I really believe that 
having a strategic plan. I know a lot of people say strategic plan, but having a strategic plan, I'm not going to say that it's going to answer all your problems, but it's going to help you in planning how you can operate with a clear fundraising strategy, as well as you defining some of those sustainable revenue goals that you have and that you can share with your volunteers or whoever is going to help you. So now I want to ask you a question and I want you to put it in the chat because I know we talked about some stuff fundraising problems, but the next I want to talk about your fundraising habits. And so if you go to the next slide, Erin, I, I almost was leery of using the word habit because Habit sounds bad. I get in the habit of doing this. I get in the habit. It sounds bad. So you can use the word, whatever word you want to use instead of habit. Your fundraising practices, your customs, your patterns, your routine, or your style. Some people have a different fundraising style. Some people are happy and some people are serious. You got that straight face and you just don't know. But tell me some of your fundraising habits or some of your fundraising customs. What do you do every year? Do you do the, the golf tournament every year? What is it that you do every year? Uh, automatic habits, put a positive spin on, put a word for it. I love it. Put a positive spin on the word for me. I love it. So yeah, I'm seeing people, you're at the beginning of the process. Okay, I get that. They do a year-end appeal. Fantastic. Do you know how important that year-end appeal is? It is very important. And in fact, I was just sharing with Ale Ale Alexandra that I get an email every year asking about uh, the Texas Nonprofit Giving Day. I live in Florida, you guys, but I get that email about the Texas Nonprofit Giving Day. How many of you are signed up for that? Yeah, thank you, North Texas Giving Day, that's it. So yeah, I'm seeing a lot of thumbs up, a lot of people are. So that is a, a great one. And that's a habit of getting ready to gear up for it or any of your fundraisers. You got to get in the habit or create a pattern saying, this is our target date. And so we can't just wait to this date to figure out what we're going to put on social media, figure out what we're going to do for, for our ask or how we want to ask. You have to get into a style of uh, a pattern fundraising. So also, I want to know what you do in the past at work. What bought in the most money for you? I want to know. And you know what? You putting it in the chat is helping other people, believe it or not. They're like, oh, I didn't think of that. Oh, I didn't think of that. So a lot of people, I see a lot of people doing North Texas giving. A lot of people do that. And I know a lot of people have told me that, I won't say a lot of people, two people have told me, that's a lot, that they didn't get anything or maybe they just got $30. Again, you have to be the one who's you know, doing the ask, who's pushing it who's getting the word out there and not just on the day of giving. Storytelling. I love this, Carla. Storytelling. Casino night and golf tournaments. Look at this. I love wine tasting. Yes. And silent auctions. Make. All of these I hope you are doing. I'm hoping I'm going to be able to add a, a, a bunch more to this. A daily post on social media platform. You guys are covering everything that I was going to talk about when I was going to give you some ideas. But this is all good because I love this. Al said grants have grown substantially in the past seven years. I love it. So they're writing grants. And so grant writing is one of the things you know you have to do. So I hope that you have planned for the rest of this year because we're just in the new year. Then next year and for the next three years, go ahead and start making those goals. And if something has worked for you in the past, keep doing it. Those golf tournaments are huge. Writing those grants, Diana said grants and corporate contributions provide limited funding. Maybe you're at a status where you need to elevate, you need to level up. So you might need to go to the next level because corporate contributions are usually like for people who are under the $10,000 mark or they're brand new starting with nonprofits. When you've get, gotten past that $10,000 in general operating budget, it's time for you to start applying for those bigger grants. So it really makes a difference. I love all of these. You guys are helping everybody. You don't even know how much you're helping everybody. So what I want to do next is just share some of my fundraising ideas. I see you guys have put some of yours in the chat. Let me just share some of mine. So we'll go to the next slide, Aaron, if you would, please. Awesome. And I know that you may see this as something that highlight at the top and then it has something at the bottom. Those don't go together. I just type them in there. So they're just randomly in there. So I'm just going to go over a few. Keep putting your fundraising ideas in the chat. But maybe some things that you have not thought of 
is offering workshops. I know that the young lady, I, I don't remember your name, but who had the Pet Food Foundation. Have you thought of offering workshop, workshops? Because see, a lot of nonprofits are doing things where we think we have to give it away free all the time. And people are always saying, is it free anyway? You're not profit. You should do this. No, you can charge for some of your activities and you must start generating a stream of income. So why not do it through workshops? If you have the Pet Food Foundation, why not talk, have even a sponsor come in and talk about why this pet food is the best pet food or why uh, pets should not be eating this or what's good for pets with arthritis. There's all kinds of things, but whatever you're passionate about, you can also talk about that because if you are a nonprofit that ha that are serving veterans and you may have served, then why don't you do a workshop for veterans? But when I say do a workshop, it doesn't have to be free. I want you to start generating income so you can charge a small fee for your workshop. Oh, we don't want to say small fee. We want to say a small donation, right? Or pe let people choose the amount they want to donate. That sounds better, right? In the nonprofit world. Also, I heard somebody mention this before, social media campaigns. But when you do social media campaigns, please, when you put your social media posts out there, don't just put it out there and say, oh, nobody can. They're not paying attention. Why don't you recruit some of your volunteers and other people, other influencers that you know who are in your server, in your community to post the same posts that you're posting on the same day to ask for donations? And make it a challenge for them who can raise the most donation and will get this gift card. And I know you got some gift cards in your stack from Walmart and Target's like that. Give them a gift card who can raise the most, who can raise the most money with your social media posts. Make it fun, okay? And then I want to talk about some collaborative campaigns. There are hundreds of, of people on this webinar. You're all, I want to say all of you, but most of you are in Texas. And so you should collaborate as you are putting your different types of nonprofits in the chat. I know I've seen somebody already share their information with another nonprofit. So you guys should collaborate with other nonprofits on some joint fundraising adventures, share the advertising costs, you increase visibility when you do that, and you attract a broader audience when you do that. Hey, look at the Texas Community Foundation or Community Foundation Checks. They attracted a broader audience into this webinar because they send it out to everybody in their email list. Collaborative campaigns, they really work. So just find somebody here in the chat and say, hey, anybody want to collaborate with me? Find your tribe right here in the chat and let's get some fundraising going. And then I want to talk about some regular communications. I know a lot of you are using the constant contact and you are using the regular communication, but some people are not. So those who are not regularly communicating with your donors, I want you to think about establishing some regular communication and not, not this email that says, give me all the time. The email that says, look what your donation did. Look what an impact it made in Sheila's life. We were able to get Sheila a, a used car so she can go to work now. Now she's working on a job, but she hasn't had a job in two years. That's the storytelling. So make sure that when you're communicating with your donors and you talk about things you achieved, upcoming projects, and show them how their donations made a direct impact. Okay. I can't say this enough. Corporate sponsorships, really big. Start really building those relationships when you go into the grocery stores or when you go to Home Depot. I had, I was looking at Home Depot's criteria for someone else and they didn't fit qualifications. But I said, don't, don't think that you're not going to get anything from them. You have to find out who the manager is and start building the relationship. Because I know a nonprofit that didn't have the qualifications. The qualifications were, they had to have a budget of $300,000. This one gentleman, he goes in and buys from them all the time. And he laughs with the manager all the time. And so she sees him come in. And so they conversate and she tells me, what do you do when he, I have a nonprofit. We are building homes for veterans, like our Habitat for Humanity, but not as big, just on a smaller scale. Just, oh, we want to help. So she made sure that he got all the, the building supplies to build a handicap ramp. And then they did a beautification project. All that was donated by Home Depot and they had the volunteers come out. So I gave that example because I want you to consider the stores that you frequent 
for your nonprofit, if you're going to a particular store all the time buying, get to know the manager and say, hey, we spent a lot of money here. This year we have spent $100,000 or this year we intend to spend $100,000. So I hope you remember us during the holidays or whenever you see another donor because a lot of times people come into the stores and talk to them and say, hey, we wish we knew a nonprofit in the area that we can donate to. I promise you, relationships are golden. So make sure you build those corporate relationships and then make sure it's mutually benefited for them. So that's what I mean by going and having those conversations. So let's talk about some grant fundraising. I know the small nonprofits are still there. I'm still on the same slide, Aaron. I know the small nonprofits are still doing that. So encourage your volunteers or your super supporters to hold small events. I post events in my backyard for nonprofits and it's not that big, but one of the nonprofits said, hey, can we do a thank you luncheon for our volunteers? And so they invited donors to the luncheon as well and they raised money. So they had a side of auction. There's always people willing to do that for you. I love this. Look in the chat for collaborating. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. And people talk about how can they register for North Texas Giving Day. We're going to go over all of that. And I'm sure some friends are sharing that in the chat. I wanted you to take a screenshot of this because when you go back and watch the video replay, then you'll be able to see which one I'm talking about. Just a couple more and then we'll go on. And we're almost just, I really want to get to your questions because your questions are really what's going to make this webinar the best webinar hearing the questions and I hope I'm going to give you some good answers. Diversify your fundraising stream, okay? A lot of people are doing the same thing and if the same thing works, do it. But then I want you to think about some products that you can sell, some merchandise that you can sell and doing some online auctions. Hey, we are, all, we are online. Look at us. Hundreds of us from all over in the same room here on Zoom. So guess how much money we could raise if we had an online auction right now? I know a lot of you get a lot of good prizes and online auctions are working just great. I bought paintings that were shipped from New York that was sent, sent from different places from an online auction with a nonprofit. So think of, think of things like that. Think of thing, a way that you can just diversify your revenue streams that can produce another source of income for you. We cannot forget the impact of storytelling. I saw somebody put it in the chat. There is so much value to storytelling because the story, it may not come from you. It's coming from somebody who you've made a difference in their life. I saw somebody put in the chat, they work with children with autism. Just imagine the impact that you're making on the family's lives and not when you help the child, you're helping the whole entire family. So it just, flows like if you drop a pedal in the river and you just the ripple just flows so talk about those impacts put them in your newsletters put an impact story in your newsletter every time because again you are sharing what you're doing in the community and it's going to make a difference now let's talk about volunteer recruitment this is the last thing i want to talk about before whether before i go to the next slide your volunteers are key your volunteers are so important you know this because a lot of you are volunteering at your own nonprofit. A lot of you work at your nonprofits as a volunteer. Who is doing that right now? You are full time at your nonprofit doing the best you can, but you get paid nothing. You get paid maybe a few dollars every now and then when you can pull it from your grant, your chance. Look at that. A lot of people, me, Sandra, Susan, a lot of people, Felicia. Cheyenne. So a lot of people, and I'm sure it would probably go on all day. And those are the people who I want to say, thank you for what you do. Uh, trust me, it's going to pay off. But think about when you are recruiting and then how you mobilize your volunteers, use your volunteers with their best skill set. Make sure they are passionate about your non nonprofit, because let me tell you something, passion is contagious. Repeat that after me. Passion is contagious. I promise you, I've been doing this for a long time, since 1997. I didn't know what I was going to do 
when I started just like you, I started because I wanted to start Able Community Kitchen School because I was passionate about cooking. I was passionate about homeless. I was passionate about teaching. So I taught people how to cook. And then we took the food. And the people that I taught how to cook were formerly incarcerated men and women, people who were aware of the work recipients. We took the food we prepared and we took it to the homeless. Passion is contagious. Before you know it, I was being speaking on the Senate floor because of Oprah Winfrey. Passion is contagious. So make sure that your volunteers are passionate about what they're doing because they are your advocates. They are your best advocates or they become your best advocates. Now, I want to talk about something really important on the next slide. Your volunteers save you money. I wanted to say they make you money, but I didn't know people would get offended by that because they can also help earn you money through matching grants. And we're going to talk about that in just a moment. But this is so critical that you know how much you are saving or making with the um, volunteer hours. How many of you are documenting your volunteer hours? Be honest, because I know you need to, but you just don't. It's so important to document the volunteer hours. Right now, according to the independent sector, one hour of volunteer time is worth $27 and 20. One hour, that's more than what some people make. That's more than minimum wage. This is according to the independent sector. The link is here on these the slides. When you get the slides, they come out with this number in April. Maybe the new number will come up. It increases every year. I love that you guys, Charles, I document pretty well. I love the honesty. I love that you do that. You guys say, volunteer, hate tracking the hours. I know they hate tracking their hours. So if they hate tracking the hours and they're not tracking the hours, let me show you how much you are missing. If you would go to the next slide, Aaron, and this is my last slide. I don't want to get into the questions. Look, this is how much volunteer hours are worth. I broke this down by saying, if you are the only volunteer, I'm going to say there are a couple of people who said, uh, Susan just said, I'm the only volunteer. If you volunteer 30 hours a week with your nonprofit times $27.20, that's $816 a week, right? Multiply that times four, that's $3,264 a month. Multiply that times 52 weeks a year, that equals to $169,728. So this is how much you have saved your organization. This is how much you should put down on your grant reporting. This is how much you should be, I won't say asking for, but hey, why not? If there's a $10,000 matching grant, you've already matched that grant because you've already volunteered the time. Because matching grants, they usually ask for volunteer hours. Well, a lot of people think it's just equipment, but it's volunteer hours as well. So it's very important that you know the value of this. So a lot of people say, oh, I didn't know it was that important. It's very important because now when you're writing your grants, you can put down, this is how we're able to sustain ourselves through volunteer hours. Our volunteers have saved us over $1 million. And look at this, how easy it is to save over $1 million with just volunteer hours. Yeah, a lot. So I want to get into your question. That was a quick and easy or small fundraising. I know there are more questions that we can answer. So on the last slide, I'm going to share how you can reach out to me, how you can stay in touch with me. I would love if you would stay in touch with me on the next slide. I want to leave you with this favorite quote of mine. The only way to do great work is to love what you do. And I know you do or you wouldn't be doing this because nonprofit is something that people really love to do. And that's why they keep doing it. So thank you all for what you do. Make sure you stay in touch with me. Follow me on social media. Subscribe to my YouTube. I do a lot of free YouTube live, live YouTubes like every other uh, Monday. We're going to be talking about grants the whole month of February. So I'm excited. I want to get into these questions you have in the Q&A section. Tracy said, we are 100% volunteer. I need tools to make us effective. What do you recommend? So Tracy, tell me what do does your nonprofit do? Put it in the chat for me. Uh, tell me a little about your nonprofit. I need to know a little bit more to talk about 
how I can make you fit. And th- I would say most of these nonprofits here are a hundred percent volunteer. So while I'm waiting for Tracy to, to type in the chat, she may have left. I'm not sure. Okay, we serve the Native American community. And when you say serve, do you feed the homeless? Do you provide education to the children? Give me more details on what you do. Humanitarian relief. So is it, and see how the, the funder keeps asking more questions, humanitarian relief. So humanitarian relief is just doing hurricane season. It's just doing crisis. It's on a reservation. So what kind of humanitarian relief do you, you provide and how often do you provide? Ongoing support, that's good to know. What do you provide? Well, Tracy did that, and she said, ooh, clothes, yes. So, so this is what I thought. And when you say what can make us more effective, you are not effective in raising funds. Is that what it is? Are you reaching out to funders, um, corporations? You need tools. I think we're going we, we're gonna to come offline. I'm going to ask you to send me an email. And I'm going to give you a, I'm going to give you a 15 minute free consultation. This is not for everybody, <laughs> but Tracy, so I'll get with you. Cause it sounds like it's something that that's going to take a long time. And one of the best ways to find grants, I don't know if you, since you're here on the TechSoup channel, if you've been to grant station, if you're a member of grant station, because you can use Google all day long and you stay on Google and be Googling and Googling and the Googling and Googling. I know that sounds crazy, but. You want to go to a place that has a database of where you can get grants. So you can put in your keywords and all the grant grantors or funders that has that. And hey, look, you have the um, Community Foundations of Texas here. They might be able to help. So um, you could check that out, Community Foundations of Texas, and also go to grantstation.com.com. A lot of people put in chats. Um, so check that out. Okay, Michelle says, any idea how we can find a way to get new donors or sponsors? Yeah, I think word of mouth is huge when you're talking about donors and sponsors. Let me just talk about donors. Word of mouth from your current volunteers, from your current donors. And then for sponsors, you have to build relationships. You have to ask. And sometimes cold calling works. Somebody got me to speak at an event. They just did a cold call. It worked because of her passion. So I hope that helped you. I'm an anonym, anonymous uh, said, by the way, identify a pitch to corporations as a startup nonprofit. That's a whole nother webinar. I hope you guys are using ChatGPT. ChatGPT can write you a beautiful pitch to a corporation as a startup. So I think that's my best answer without us going into doing a webinar on that. I love it. I love it. I love it. Did y'all have access to Candid Foundation? We have find a lot of donations that way. Oh, awesome. Oh, Candid. Oh, yeah. They used to be the uh, foundation center. So we do not on TechSoup. Grant Station is our, our partner. But, and I know Candid, they get pretty expensive, but you have to have that database. But if you cannot afford it, you can use it at the public library. And public library is a great resource for that. The math multiplies. Hey, don't, don't it, by 52 versus weekly. I don't know what that meant. Maybe I was wrong on the map, but the map was mapping. But thank you. You guys got the picture of how valuable the not the, the volunteer hour is. Michelle or Michael apologize. What's the best way to come to document the hours? How much detail is needed? Uh, every minute, uh, 10 minutes, whatever they're doing, uh, you should document. Um, some people are still using sheets you write down. Some people are using the Excel spreadsheet. Some people have a Google Doc that people sign in. Some people do multiple things. So you have to do what's best for you. Put in the chat what you guys are using. So uh, Mike will have an idea of what best to use for documenting his volunteer. That was a great question. Alora says, can you talk about the different fundraising strategies for different kinds of donors, individuals and corporations? Oh, wow. See, Fundraising strategy is going to be based on you and your organization. So the strategy is your goal, um, your objectives, and then who is going to work on those objectives, those projects. So it, that could be different. Now, donors, if I could do it in short one minute, fundraising strategy for a donor, it could be reaching out to them, reaching out to a current donor, and then asking if they have other donors, other partners that they 
know about that with donating or other donors. Individuals, you've got to get the data. Data is important. Getting the data is so important. When I say data, I'm talking about their phone number, their emails. You have to keep in touch with your donors. And the only way to do that with individuals is having the data. So that's the biggest thing. I hope that helps. Shana says, is there a cost to sign up for Candid to access um, donors? Yes, there is a fee. There's a monthly fee. And as I said, if you have a, a public library, they have access to it on their computers. So you maybe can pull up your donors that way. Okay, so someone says, um, what's the best way to increase our individual donors when our small adult literacy organization has been relying on grants and we never had a base of individual donors? So why haven't you had a base of individual donors? That's the question. And especially if you're serving adults, your people that you're serving, that's your word of mouth, people that you've helped and they, trust me, they are reaching out to other donors. That, that would be the question for me. And Natasha said, Opportunity Rising Foundation provides scholarships and educational opportunities for residents in Dallas housing. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Okay, Chris says the question may be off topic, but when talking about data and how to manage all the data within our outreach program, what's the best nonprofit data management software to use? Hopefully it could help with project management as well. Yeah, Chris, that's going to be your preference. Some people use Salesforce. Some people use um, HubSpot. There's so many. If you're using a uh, CRM in the chat, would you type in the chat which CRM you're using? So that's a great question. Okay. I see the pointer and stuff going off. So I'm not sure if, it, yes. So a lot of people, oh, some people say give effect. So that's some answers they're using. Give effect, neon, Salesforce. Thank you guys for sharing. Cloud Haven, somebody put in there. Great. Thank you so much. Melanie said that Cloud Haven built a CRM system for them two years ago and it's tailored to their nonprofit needs. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, you want to get one that you love. Michael, use a Google Sheet. Yep, you can use a Google Sheet. Also, you're using Google Sheet now. That works. If, if that works for you until you can move to using technology, you want to start using technology, using the cloud. So that's great. Lisa, said, what is your best recommendation for finding new volunteers? We, we specifically are looking for some volunteers with marketing and social media needs. Oh, that's good. When you're looking for somebody who does the marketing and social media, I wouldn't look at the colleges, those uh, programs where they're looking for interns and things like that. Asking around, word of mouth, because you want to, if, if you're looking for a recommendation, ask other nonprofits who they're using. But there's a lot of websites that have free volunteers. Put that website in the chat who had free volunteers. I can't think of it right now, but they will help you find free volunteers. So hopefully that helped. We didn't have few success based on individual donors. Very few donors are in our database. Yeah, I'm hoping that it will grow. Just continue to have it events. And when you have events, you are collecting the data and that will grow your donor base. That looks like all for the q and I didn't know if anything popped up in the chat, Eli, that I missed. Great question, everybody. Yeah, there's some questions coming through, but we've touched most of them. I think the sex soup have a recommended CRM. I think the answer to that is no, but we do have a couple items in our catalog of offers that are in the CRM category. And we'll share that link into the chat in a moment. You know what? I just wanted to add one thing. There are CFT members, 80 plus, who uh, are participants in our quad subscription. So you have a subscription to a list of benefits that we offer, including a gated members-only community space, which includes a bunch of resourcing around fundraising, around AI, around uh, volunteer management, tech tools, but just a bunch of stuff. We have experts in there. We also have uh, biweekly tech office hours. Those are great as well. My point is a lot of you have participated, but a lot of you have not yet. After we're done here, I will resend the link that, in, that link that allows you to enter the community space that we have for you, as well as links to other resources that you can access. Well, awesome. And I saw somebody had put in there the volunteer match. Thank you for that, Sharon and Alba with the volunteer match. They're the website I was trying to think of. Someone asked, what's the biggest mistake you've seen in grant writing? I think the biggest mistake is waiting to the last minute to apply for the grant. If you see a grant and they said the deadline is 
in three days, you are in a hurry to apply and you miss so many things and you make so many mistakes, so many typographical areas, errors. So I think that is probably the biggest one that I've seen. So a couple more people put something in the chat. Awesome. Thank you. Brian says, as a DEI nonprofit focused on sending Black and Brown students abroad for educational travel purposes, how would you suggest partnering with organizations for students' exposure and financial contribution? I love what you're doing, by the way. That's awesome. You want to create a national volunteer-based team? I don't know. If, when you put that in parentheses, I'm not sure if that was part of the question. Or are you creating a national volunteer-based team? But there are a lot of travel companies, so I would ask if they would help by sponsoring a student. That's one of the things I would do. I talk to travel agents. I'm getting emails from about four different ones that I have traveled through, and they're always offering deals, and they're always offering coupons and things like that. And I know, that's why I know what you want to hear, but you want to, if you say, you want, how do you just partner with them? That may be a way, but also storytelling so that you can get donors to donate to sponsor them. So I think putting them on video and letting them tell one of their stories of one incredible journey they had while on their adventures or the adventures that they desire to take if they have not taken the journey already, let that be part of the storytelling and ask for a donation. Say you need to raise $5,000 for each student for each trip. So I hope that helps. James said, we're looking to rewrite our organization bylaws. Is there a template or resource you recommend? So board source have some recommendations. You can Google bylaws. All laws are on the internet all day long. You can just Google sample bylaws or homeless organization. Whatever your organization is, put that word in, sample bylaws for this. And I think you'll be able to find this. Feel free to connect with me. Like I said, even on LinkedIn, I know um, somebody just put that in chat. Thank you for that. I'm going to put my information in the chat again. There is a question in the chat that says how you demonstrate impact. You demonstrate impact by your, the number of people you have helped. Thank you guys so much. You could say you've helped five kids or 10 kids or 12 kids. Talk about the demographics. Talk about what a difference you made. I'm going to use an example. You were helping children in the third grade pass to the next grade that normally. And Cheyenne, just a heads up that I've given you the ability to come on mic if you're able to, because it's, that's a pretty naughty question, which we'll need some digging into. Okay. I haven't even started really fundraising yet. I'm just now starting to research it because everything you have to learn as you go. And um, we all have day jobs and children and that kind of thing. We send out care packages to people that are having a hard time. Um, and I just now started a testimonial page. And I've been asking for testimonies and they're coming in. But besides that, but that helped when you said how many people. Yeah, so I'll keep track of how many people received charity from us. Um, okay. Anything else? Yeah. Oh, can we refresh my memory of what kind of nonprofit you, you were you the the humanitarian nonprofit? I can't remember. I'm sorry. I don't know what you would call us. I guess it's just a charity where we illuminate the dark with the night sun by just helping encourage and heal and empower. We have workshops. Everything we do has been free though, donation only. But we have workshops oh. and teach class. is a sort of a dancer. She did a Zumba instruction for a long time. And then I'm the yoga person. So we mix those two together. Oh, wow. Okay. And just teach a lot of stress management tools. Okay. Was there a question with that? Because I might have missed part of your question. Oh, I'm just more ways to demonstrate our impact. More creative okay. ways, maybe. Okay. All the things you're doing, the stress management, you should do a survey beginning before they start and then a survey midway and a survey afterwards so they can tell you what impact you made and then you can use that as part of your data. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you for that question. And thank you, everyone. This has been so great for me. I, I always love talking to nonprofits. I love to see what you're doing, what a difference you make. I lived in, in Grand Prairie for a while. I miss Texas. I, I could just say a lot for the nonprofits in Texas. Y'all really do it big. So keep doing what you're doing. Um, thank you for your time.